Good morning. It is morning here for me. Um, I want to just take a minute and talk about bending. Um, sort of give you some insight as to what I think, you know, would be things to consider to uh, push yourself into the category of a high level bender, confident bender, somebody who's musically um, engaging in these bends in a way that sounds and feels musical, not just to you, but to the listener. And today I'm doing an entire class on bending. It's a $15 class. It's not too late to sign up. I'll put a link in the video description later, but basically um, this class is a $15 class, a little lower price point than I normally do. And this class is all about, it's kind of like if you were to go to a yoga class and go through the motions and work out, um, doing all the poses and stretches. It's, it's a way for you to stay on track and go spend an hour with me getting these practice points. Um, some A lot of insight as to the mechanics of draw and blow bending and exercises. So today, uh, I'll just talk loosely about what I think would be, like I said, beneficial to be considering because I feel like there's so much information out there on bending that let's just, let me just talk about it from the top of my brain here for a minute and I'll open up my video on my phone in case somebody wants to ask a quick question. But um, for example, like today, we're going to start by talking about the mechanics of it, but that doesn't always help people to, you know, you could talk something to death, but that but finding your way through bending requires you to really see harmonica to really have a moment and experiment with each and every hole in various key harmonicas so there's tip number one is that if you're not using multiple key harmonicas you will become a stronger bender most likely on certain keys and, and have challenges on other keys and you don't want to do that you want to be able to pick up any key harmonica any hole and just bend and so what i want to do here is just sh share with you maybe i'll take a minute and just talk about one of the exercises that we'll do. Um, this idea, like a beginner, I remember when I first started, somebody said, you got to go slowly into these bends and see if you can sustain them. So I would practice just going slowly in and out of the bend, which is one of the simple sort of get to warm up, I guess a warm up exercise for bending is just going through the motion of slowing down and not just trying to not thinking of these bends as an effect, but more of the note choices themselves. So you might just slowly take on C harp and start with that thing and really see you're evaluating the tone, you're evaluating the quality of the note. Is it shaky and st or is it stable? And the intonation itself, how is the pitch sounding on that particular note? Um, those are really important things to consider. Now, how would you know if you're making an error? How would you know if you haven't made it to the lowest note? Well, it's not that hard. You need to get yourself a chromatic instrument or get yourself a piano app, which is what I have. This little, the piano is what it's called for my iPhone. And from there, I think you can, you'll find that you can play the note and have a moment to listen to the note and then you have a target to shoot for, make sense? And if you do this consistently with the app, you'll find that it's much easier uh, to hear the bend before you play it. So you keep going. And one of the things I'm going to point out today, among many things, is this ability to slow down and maybe hold the lowest available bend in each hole. Sustain it. So we'll be doing some of that together. But it's a way for you to ask, actually ask questions in these classes and take a minute and say, here's my particular problem. This key harmonica, this particular bend, um, here's, let me, you know, you can describe what's going on and we can have a minute and try to problem solve all of that. Sorry, I'm looking for something. I've almost found it. Now, these these technique classes are a series of classes that I'll offer one a month. So bending is the first series. Then the second series will be um, tongue blocking. And here's the link if you want it. I just put it in the chat. And then the third one is mixed technique like warbles and vibratos, all the other remaining sort of techniques that fill in the gaps for the for your approach to playing. Specifically, I guess a lot in the world of blues, blues harmonica, but also other genres. And 
I would just encourage you guys to really spend more time with practicing bending in a musical context. This is another sort of tip so that when you practice, if you get an exercise down and I've got a, a boatload of exercises that I want to share with the group today, that the each and every exercise feels musical so that if you were to turn on a backing track, um, you could play like this. Um, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. You could take like a medium shuffle in G on a C harp. <clears throat> Let me just demonstrate some of these. I think that it would be helpful just to hear a little bit. Get this speaker a little bit closer. So I warm up every, every day with stuff like this. down and there's two there's two key components to thinking about your attack with bending and the first one um, th these are things to just chew on so that you're you have like a focal point when you're practicing you know make sure you're switching up between glissando and staccato approaching to your bends so the the staccato is just a a quick note that's cut with your tongue, let's say, ta-ta. And then the glissando is just these microtonal slow in and out. And so you can begin to very much target uh, the type of work that you want to get out of these bends, the type of benefit, I suppose, that you want to get out of the bends. Um, and yeah, so if you're not like hyper focused on bending, and it doesn't matter what level player you are, to me it's the it's the most crucial of all of the techniques that you need to work on. Okay, that's what I want to say is that if you're not spending that time, you're likely spending it doing something that you're already further along with, and you might as well spend time on the things that are the most challenging. And I know for me personally, and most people, bending is something you constantly want to refine. All right. The step one would be to really work out the how to's of what's happening, you know, the mechanics of your bends, both draw and blow bends. And that's challenging, I think, for a beginner to decipher uh, whether the tongue position is giving them one note or the other because they don't even know what note, what the note should sound like. So. Try to make little patterns. One of the cool things we'll do in class today is work on a brand new 12 bar bending exercise. You might remember from YouTube, I gave away this cool one, the draw bend. Working out the one chord portion, draw, half step, two full step, two blow, all in one hole. Constantly thinking about timing when you work exercises too. Try to make them not only musical, but in, obviously in good time so that there's a rhythm to everything you do. If I start an exercise that goes each, each time I should get a, a consistent rhythmic attack on those exercises. Um, and then, so the one I gave away was just, you can go look it up, 12 bar bending exercise on YouTube uh, under my videos. And then I got a new one of those. Let me pull up these notes. Um, we're going to be doing some half step bending work where we focus and target on the half steps only just as an awareness thing to really get to know the muscle memory for the half steps. Um, and even the step and a half, um, and full step bend, I see that I've written something incorrectly on my notes. Now I can change that. <laughs> But it, it's a way for you to get serious about targeting these notes so that you can use them. The sweetest sound we get on the harmonica, the whole reason I picked it up was, was this sound, you know, the, the emotion that's captured in bending. So if you want more and you want to go deep and have 60 minutes of practice with me today for 15 bucks, check out the link that I've posted at the top.
when you check out on the website, you can download a PDF that'll give you the class link. I'll up I'll update it right now so that it also includes the class notes. If you give me like, I don't know, give me till like uh, 9.45 a.m. Central, I'll have that updated with the notes. So you can grab everything at checkout, even last minute, at, you know, before class starts. It's an 11 a.m. class today. That's uh, 9 Pacific, 10 Mountain, 11 Central, 12 Eastern. 4 p.m. GMT, UK, you're at 5 p.m. And that's as far as my brain is going to go right now. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this class. It's going to be a chance to get together and just go through the motions, practice, ask your questions. Hello, everybody that is tuning in right now. Good morning. <clears throat> Orlando, what's up, buddy? Jean-Pierre is going to be there. Thanks, Jean-Pierre, for tuning in for this little broadcast about bending. Um, what else do I want to mention? <clears throat> if you're a beginner getting into it, spend a little more time on your draw bends in the beginning and get to know these notes and spend even more time on holes two and three where there's multiple bends available. Then think about working your way up to the blow bends. I wouldn't wait too long personally. I wouldn't try to master draw bending and then go into blow bending. There's a lot of discussion. When should I, when should I actually do that? Well, just go for it based on when you feel is right. But Make sure you've spent some time on the draw bending and you've accomplished something. You can move these notes to some degree, at least half step or more on every hole. And I think it's fine to work blow bending. It's a totally different approach to bending. The tongue's in a totally different position. And the final thing we're going to do today, and I've talked a bunch about this on my channel, is looping an idea that is bend heavy. Um, and that means, you know, riffs that you can bring in a loop cycle so you can get that muscle. The, the muscle memory is created when you spend more concentrated time over and over, right? On one piece. So what we do in these loops, we just keep going. And it really, you can get a rhythm to this, which is really nice. Uh, I make them up all the time when I'm sitting around. I just, you know... The key is that it brings you back to the note you started at and you can just play it as a loop. Um, and you would obviously, you could slow down a lot of what's going on here uh, and just work at your own pace. Um, think about, the final tip is sort of get to know that the, the, become intimately aware of tongue position, which is something we'll get into in class. And think about the connection between the top of the tongue and the roof of the mouth. Think about that and really think about the areas to target because when you're bending, you're, you're trying to cut off the airflow. You're trying to choke these notes out. So in the process of doing that, the notes go a little funny on you at first, but then you learn how to adjust your airflow. But you got to think about the connection to the, of the top of the tongue, whether you're a tongue blocker or pucker player. In class, I'm focused on pucker bending, but I am going to explain my best ability to my best ability, explain uh, draw tongue block bending which I, you know, I use that. I'm a little more comfortable on like an A. It's hard because I don't practice it, but I have an understanding of where that happens and I'm going to go through a little explanation of that to my best ability. <clears throat> and Alan's bringing up a great point. Um, he's been at it for four years, but he struggles with sustaining bends We'll talk about that today in class. It's a huge important practice point that sustain. And then I do have tips for how you can imp immediately improve the sustain that I want to share with everybody. Um, another big hot topic is being able to go right to each and every bend. So make a list of some of these things that I've thrown out there and sort of do a bit of an evaluation. Where am I with these things? Reorganize the list based on your weakest topics first and go at it. You know, and if you're feeling lost, like you need a little more direction or... Uh, structure, join me today. I think it'd be the best 15 bucks you spent for a 60 minute class. We'll be there a full hour going through these motions of working on bending. Plus you're going to get all the notes to take home and continue practicing. I think my idea with these classes was to make them slightly more affordable than my average class, but they're a little bit shorter. There's a little, I would say there's a little bit less prep time on my behalf, but really I end up just going at it and writing notes fresh again. Um, and they're recorded, but you only have seven days to view it 
um, if you don't download it, you lose it. So when you get the recording link, you just simply hit the download button and you've got it forever. The key is that you've downloaded it within the seven days after the event, so you don't lose it. Unlike other classes where they're indefinitely in the cloud, you can stream it while you're online. These you'll need to download, but it's a super fast MP4 video download and it comes out just like what you're watching here. I'm inside of Zoom, so the quality is nice and, and, and good. Um, and it comes with an MP3 file of all of the class as well. So you get the audio from the class, the video and audio, and I think the chat as well. Difficulty bending on a low F. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's challenging. My only tip to you when you get to the really low keys, uh, like G and low F and then lower, is that you have to start unhinging this jaw and really loosen everything up and, and really work on the, the, changing the shape of of your mouth and your jaw to open it up so that the tongue has room to really move and flex in that ultra high way back positioning to get that um, bend to come out. So bending's tricky, but these exercises are key, everybody. If you don't have at least a few exercises that you run through, that doesn't mean just trying to bend on each hole randomly. Um, maybe it is if you target specific notes, that's a decent starting exercise, but you need some of the stuff that we'll go through today uh, in this class, I think it'll be extremely helpful. Let me just see if I've missed anything. Yeah, so today's like come on out and learn a little bit more, see how you can refine these. We're looking for fluidity. My objective is to help you articulate clear draw and blow bends in this class with accurate intonation on various key harmonicas so that you're not stuck to one key. <laughs> Just start experimenting, you know? I used to do this all the time when I first started bending. Bellowing the air in and out of like five draw. Later, I realized that that bellowing could be used a little more effectively if I worked on something like a tongue pump, which is a variation built in with like focus on that tongue movement. You can get some really fast, almost vibrato sounding kind of um, bending going on there with just the tongue movement. So, and if you're going to just jam and, and, and practice just this idea of improvising uh, through 12 bars, let's say, on your own, you know, there's a million ways to do that. And I'm going to come back and demo some stuff that came from uh, the front porch and back porch class that I offered, which is this idea of just when no one's around and you have no, uh, uh, what's the word, no accompaniment, and what, what can you do? Well, sometimes it can be just riff oriented. <laughs> or you can stay in that one chord, kind of like focus where you don't change keys. trying to just target the bends primarily while I'm improvising I'm just thinking how can I incorporate as much of the bends and the way to think about that stuff everyone if you're not is think about it in relationship to the chord that you want to play if it's a one chord you can get away with playing just about every every bend available on the bottom the step and a half okay not so much in a, in a one chord thing it, it can be used closer to like the five chord area let's say but the every other note is relevant Every draw bend is relevant on the one chord, you know?
anywhere you want to go, just start experimenting with bringing it into your phrasing. Use the bends. Go there as often as you can. Um, and then, you know, like I mentioned earlier, spend more time on the areas that are tough. Don't, don't shy away from something because it's not clicking. Just think about it in a different way. Try to approach it from a new angle. Yes, Roger, that totally makes sense because you're improving. So Roger's comment, and then we'll, we'll end it here, I think. Um, you know, just when you think you have bending down, then I think I don't. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you're constantly learning. You're constantly uh, learning something. You hear something, your ears are catching new things that you haven't tried yet. Uh, so yeah, that does make sense. Can you play a single note and make it sound good? I, I mean, I hope so. Every note you play should sound nice and strong. All right, I'm gonna play you out. Here we go. Let's let's just play something different. This kind of vibe comes from I think the back porch blues class. Join me in this class if you're inclined to uh, work on your bending here, in the, and it starts in an hour and a half. So I'm going to go get some things done beforehand. Thanks for hanging out on this glorious Sunday with me, and I'll catch you soon.